Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of two etiquette books, Etiquette, The Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. My books are only available in English language here in Azerbaijan in hardcover print. If you would like to order a signed copy, please make sure to email me here down below. I'll also link it in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development, books that I read. So if you're interested in all of that, please make sure to subscribe as well as hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you're an old subscriber, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to see you here. In today's video, I'll talk about five health habits that I have. Some of them are rather new and others I've been practicing for a really long time. So briefly about myself, I am 30 years old. I do have two children, a daughter who is six years old and a son who is three. So I'll tell you what I do in order to feel young and to look young. Health habit number one is something that I've actually been advised recently by my mother is to soak walnuts and almonds in water overnight before consuming them. I used to eat them just like that, like they, I bought them in the store, but then she told me it's better to soak them overnight or at least for seven hours before consuming them. So I take a handful of almonds or nuts, in this case I only have almonds, I'll just add some water to make sure that I cover all the almonds and walnuts that I have and I then make them stay in water for about seven hours or usually overnight. If you will consume it for breakfast, you can do it overnight. If you will consume it for dinner, you can do it in the morning when preparing your coffee and then they'll be ready to be consumed at dinner time. So the next morning, once you have soaked your almonds or walnuts in water, the skin becomes super soft. So it's very easy to peel it and then you just eat and the almonds and walnuts are usually much more uh, voluminous because they've soaked in all the water. They taste a lot softer, creamier, um, they have more buttery taste to them. Uh, number one, they are very, very tasty uh, and kids love them more soaked in water than otherwise because otherwise they have a little bit of a bitter aftertaste. And secondly, they're very good soaked overnight in water because that way they're much easily absorbed into your body. It's much easier to digest them and hence it's much easier than uh, for the body to absorb all the nutrients that almonds and walnuts have. I actually like to have the walnuts in the morning with my morning coffee and then I'll leave the almonds either for an afternoon snack or I'll have them with my dinner. So eating overnight soaked almonds is a rather new habit of mine. Uh, a much older one is drinking celery juice with some lemon and ice. If you have been following me on my Instagram page, you probably have seen a lot of pictures of a glass with a green drink in it and that's a celery juice with lemon and ice. I love soury taste, so if you love it, you can add lemon and then it becomes even more fresh. But if you don't like really soury, then you know just make a little bit, just maybe sprinkle a bit of lemon um, because celery by itself is, has quite a bit of a, a dense taste. I don't know how to describe it otherwise, uh, so I like to have it with lemon. Why is it good for you? It is amazing. It has a lot of health benefits. I like to drink it in the afternoon after lunch um, and especially after working out um, because when you work out you sweat and you lose body salts and uh, celery juice helps actually to restore the electrolyte balance in your body. Also, it's super amazing for your digestive system. It's amazing for hydrating your skin, your body. Um, it's just a, a magical elixir, I would say. And a lot of people actually drink it in the morning on an empty stomach um, because celery juice helps a lot with getting rid of the puffiness, um, getting rid of you know the swollenness that you have in the morning because it has a lot of uh, diuretic um, benefits. It makes you urinate faster or more frequently, hence you get rid of all the water that's stored in your body and helps uh, depuff your body and your face, especially in the morning. But I don't need that, so that's why I prefer to have it after lunch or after some kind of a meal because I often find that to be a little bit more um, 
acidic to my stomach when I consume it in the morning, especially that I squeeze a lot of lemon into it. It's a super refreshing drink. Uh, you can actually drink it throughout the day. Uh, if you can't drink it at one go, though at one go would be much better because it's more fresh then and it's better just to consume it. But if you can't make yourself consume it at one go, you can you know, drink it within an hour or two. Um, and it's just an amazing drink. If you have never tasted it, if you've never tried it, please make sure that you do and then leave your comments down below here to let me know how you've liked it. The third health habit that I've recently acquired as well is a breathing technique that is taught by Dr. Whale. Um, he appeared on Ellen DeGeneres show and he talked about this breathing technique and I loved it because it was so simple. I usually know, I learn about a lot of the techniques out there, but I rarely practice them. Uh, I forget about them, but somehow this technique stuck with me and I've been practicing it for about a month now and I absolutely love it. So the technique is called a relaxing breath and it's easy because the formula is four, seven, eight. That's a proportion. Uh, you could do, you know, eight, 14 and 16. Um, but um, I stick to 478 and I do it together with my kids before their nap time. So uh, we're usually seated at the bed, making sure that we keep our spines straight. And what you do is you breathe in through your nose on a count of four, and then you keep hold your breath on a count of seven. So you don't breathe at all or don't, don't breathe in or breathe out. So you keep your hold onto your breath. And then on a count of eight, you breathe out through your mouth, making sure that you keep your tongue on the upper front of your teeth. And when you're breathing out, you make the sound of a whoosh out of your mouth and you breathe out on a count of eight. So four, seven, eight is only one breath. You have to do it four times. This relaxing breath is a very powerful technique because it calms down your body, it distresses it and really makes you a little bit sleepy, I would say. So I'd recommend to do it perhaps in the afternoon when you have this little short break for lunch. Um, you could just breathe, do this breathing exercise so that you can calm yourself down. Uh, once you've exhausted yourself in the morning and then uh, you could repeat this right before going to bed. So to show you this exercise in practice, I'll keep quiet and make sure that you have your spine straight. You can do it while watching this video and make sure that you put your tongue on the upper, behind the upper front teeth and keep it like that throughout the whole exercise. So this was just one set and you have to do three more. So four set in total for one exercise. Talking about doing this breathing exercise before a nap, my most powerful tool of keeping and feeling young, energized, alive is taking naps. And I do it together with my kids in the afternoon. I make sure that I put them to bed at least, you know, if they even rest for 30 minutes, that's amazing. Uh, the younger one, of course, sleeps for a longer time, but my older daughter would usually nap for about 30 to 40 minutes. I try to keep my nap shorter from 20 to 30 minutes in order to make them a power nap because if I sleep longer, then I will get into a much deeper sleep and that will not necessarily be a power nap. As long as I can remember myself, I've always been huge on naps because that's something that I saw as well in our family. Uh, when my parents would come from work, we'd all have uh, lunch together and then lunch slash dinner together and then we would all take a short nap and then the day would go on and then I'll go to see my tutors or I'll do my homework. Um, when I was in university I napped as well uh, before you know after classes I would come take a short nap and then move on do my homework or even prepare to go out um, and now that I've been working I make sure that uh, whenever I have a little bit of a free time uh, since I work from home I make sure that I nap for about 20 to 30 minutes to feel much more re-energized, to calm myself down um, and to boost my mood uh, as well as immune system. It has been proven that power naps are amazing at you know, elevating your mood, uh, boosting your brain power, your immune system, uh, relieving stress, 
Uh, so try for yourself, make sure you don't sleep more than 30 minutes and try to do it before 3 p.m. Because after 3 p.m., especially in winter time, it might be very difficult to get out of that nap and then actually you will feel a little bit more tired than you were before the nap. Napping is nothing new. I have not invented it. Uh, I have, I'm not the only person talking about the importance of naps. A lot of cultures around the world have even special names for nap time, like the Spanish siesta, Italian riposo, uh, Japanese, I want to say inamuri. I'm not sure if I'm correctly pronouncing it. I'll, I'll write it out here so you can know how it's spelled. All these uh, countries and cultures stress the importance of a little bit of a rest time after lunch, uh, so that you can feel re-energized and ready to continue on move on with your day listen to your body don't let it get exhausted to the point that you don't feel healthy anymore and a short nap can always help number five and the final point for today is exercise daily exercise is important and it has been a huge transformational thing for me because I've already mentioned this in my Instagram in one of my latest posts that I don't like working out. I'm not a person who feels energized and just loves and feels alive after workout. That's not about me. So really getting used to daily workout has been a huge transformational stage in my life. Uh, so before I used to work out with an instructor who would come over to our house twice a week and I would work out with her. Um, we had a scheduled class at a certain date, a certain hour uh, for a certain amount of time. So it was great. I loved it. It helped me, you know, build up my muscles. It helped me feel energized afterwards, but not right after the workout because I'd feel extremely tired right after. But what I found difficult with that is that sometimes I wasn't ready to work at the time when she arrived and was in front of our doors and I couldn't postpone the class because she was already there. And the second is that she would come for an hour workout. So I had to work out for an entire hour. Sometimes my body didn't feel like it wanted to work out for an hour. Sometimes I only felt like doing exercise for 20 minutes. And then, so these two things, not being able to control the amount of time that I would work out and the time when I worked out, actually was something that actually made me not want to work out in the first place. And then over the summer, I was just looking at my Instagram feed and I saw this sponsored video or app from Daily Yoga. By the way, this video is not sponsored by them at all. I just wanted to share my personal journey and I decided to try it out. It's probably the only application that stuck with me because doing yoga has always been on my list, on my bucket list, to-do list, but I never had a systematic video or app that could help me get into the mood and when I found this daily yoga app I loved how clean minimal and how different it was it allows you to choose workout from 10 minutes onwards you have different kind of focus areas you could tone up your body build muscle you know become better at yoga you know improve the flexibility of your body so it gives you a different range of things to choose from and different duration time that was perfect for me so for someone who doesn't like to work out, uh, working out for 10 minutes and just getting into the mood was a huge um, game changer. So I downloaded this app and I started working out. I would do for 20 minutes one day, another day, once I was on the mat, I was like, okay, so since I'm now on the mat, I might as well just add on to another workout and just move on. Some days I do for 20 minutes and some days I feel so amazing, so energized that I do three works out or four works out back to back. So I'll work out for an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, depends on how my body feels that day. But I made sure that I at least do 20 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes a day. And Daily Yoga app has been huge, tremendous in helping me do that. The most important discovery was for me to find an application or a system, a school, so to speak, an online school that could help me get started at my own level. Because you get to choose from beginner, intermediate, you know, advanced level, and I'm a beginner, so I would just stick to my level of workouts. Second thing that helped me a lot is just being able to control the time that I wanted to spend working out. Was it 20 minutes? Was it an hour? I get to decide. And third, an important thing that I discovered for myself, and I think that shifted my mindset a lot, um, because I thought it was only good to work out in the morning. That's how you start your day. For me, when I wake up in the morning, my body's too weak. I don't have the energy to do anything. And after workout, I feel like I'm burned out. 
So figuring out a time that works best for your body, for me it's either in early afternoon or late afternoon. Um, so if, if I'm not going anywhere, I'll work out around 7. If I have somewhere to go, I'll work out around 4 or 5. Um, again, if I have something planned for the entire day, then I'll try to work out early in the morning to make sure that I don't have to think about it afterwards. Um, but in order to make it a practice, you have to find a time that is best for your body to practice. Along with that point, another thing that helped me get started is that I kept my mat and everything that I needed close by. So it was all in my um, bedroom and I know it's easily accessible. Another thing that has helped me is buying the clothes that would get me excited to work out in. So I was looking forward to the clothing that I would be wearing in order to work out. If you are a person like me, if you like the visual aesthetics of the things, that, the way they look, if you're into visuals, then you probably need to um, invest a little bit into workout clothes so you love the way you look when you're in a workout clothes. Um, other times when I don't have any energy to change, I'll just work out in my PJs uh, and then I'll just move on with my day. So depends on really how I feel, but uh, it has also helped me to get into the mood of workout. The two important lessons that I want you to take away if you are struggling to start exercising, if you don't feel like doing it and you're looking for motivation is do not look for motivation. You know, there are some people out there that feel very much motivated to work out. They love it. They love the feeling afterwards. Um, their body wants to work out. For those people, maybe motivation works. But for most of us who are not very into exercising, the best thing to do is to understand you don't need motivation to work out. You need discipline. And that's the only thing you need to look for. You have to discipline yourself to dedicate 20 minutes at least every single day to work out. It's number one thing to remember. And number two is that actually it's not about the intensity of the workout. It's about the consistency. That's something that it took me a long time to realize. I would work out twice a week, I would do it for an hour, an hour and a half, feel exhausted, burned out, wouldn't want to do it after the day after or the day, day after that. But what I realized is that it's not about really the intensity because I will burn myself out, I will hate working out and I'll never do it again. Most likely I'll give up. What you have to do is discipline yourself and be consistent with it. Don't do for an hour, do for 15 minutes. But if you do 15 minutes each day, imagine in a year time how much of a work time you have been dedicating yourself to. So remember, discipline and consistency are the most important things when it comes to a workout. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do let me know in the comment section down below what are some health habits that you have uh, that you would like to share with all of us and which ones of these habits are you already practicing and which ones are your favorite. Also, if you're still with me, I would like to make an announcement that I've launched my Patreon page uh, entitled Etiquette Movie Club. There I upload on a monthly basis a video from a movie that we're watching about the etiquette takeaway lessons from that particular movie. I've done one on Titanic, I've done one on Grace of Monaco, so I'll link it down below as well in the description box. If you would like to become my patron and join the Etiquette Movie Club, you're more than welcome. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!